Oh my, oh my, look at the stack of boxes. Um, Meeting recently contacted me and decided to send me a few items. And of course, I already had a whole bunch of these items in a wish list because who can resist some of their porcelain items? And we're going to try out their paper today. So we're going to actually swatch out the egg tempera that I recently got in on the paper and play around with that a little bit. And so I'm going to separate all these items and we'll take one by one and then we'll try out the paper, do a little swatching, have a little fun. I am so excited to see what these look like out of the box. Oh my goodness, I've had these on my wish list for so long. Uh, you can probably just hear the excitement in me. I am so very excited and I appreciate you joining me for all this I don't even know how I'm getting all this on screen, but usually I put a cutting board to like make the area non-reflective and stuff. So um, it doesn't give me any angles or anything like that. So I thought one of these drawing and sketching boards would be fantastic. Ooh, look at this. Everything came packaged really, really well. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Oops. Sorry about the noise. Let me give you a band. Let's flip this over. One, two, three. Oh, look how pretty. So then when we do our swatches or paints if I need an angle I can also lift this up let's see how it works Look how nice that is. That is so nice. Oh, I'm so excited. That is so very nice. It's like very sturdy as well. Next up, this has been on my wish list forever. Um, I can't believe how generous Meaden was to send me these items for everyone to take a look at. And let's see if we can get this palette I want as a studio palette and I want to put all my favorite colors in. All right, it was packed really nicely in all the styrofoam and I didn't want to make a whole bunch of, this is a, actually a sturdy plastic lid, which I love that their porcelain palette comes with a lid so that when you set it aside, like little furries aren't gonna get in it or anything. And look at that. Is that gorgeous? That is gorgeous. That is, I have to touch. I have to fondle everything. Sorry if my lights are reflecting a little bit. We'll take care of that in a minute when we do our paper testing. How beautiful. That is absolutely gorgeous. It is really weighty too. This is heavy. Heavy duty. Look at how solid that is underneath. So beautiful. Next we have this porcelain mixing tray, which I think is going to be perfect for our little temper experiment today. Sorry about the noise. See, they package everything really, really nice. I don't want to forget to tell you, I do have a discount code so you can get even a larger discount um, using Raspberry at checkout on the Meaden website. It gives you 10% off, so that's really, really nice. Look at, that's actually much larger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be even smaller. It's a really nice size. 
I think this can sit right next to the paper. Let's grab that. And this is going to be all reflective right now. <laughs> oh my goodness, that works. It's like exactly the... It's a little bit smaller than the 7x10 paper. So let's get some of that glare off. One second. I went ahead and I took the plastic off of the watercolor paper just because it was putting quite a big glare. It has a cover sheet on it, so let's see if we can get a knife to slice that off. And feel the paper. a good piece. I always save these um, and use them for miscellaneous. Let's fold that back. Okay, let me feel it. It feels a little bit rougher than a Fabriano. Let me feel it against. And this is their hot press. Let me feel it against Saunders Waterford. Oh, it's pretty close. Saunders Waterford, I'd say, is a little bit... This The Meaden has just a hair more grip, more texture. It's probably going to be easier to paint on this hot press. It's not... It doesn't have as much texture as like a Fabriano soft press, but it's not quite as smooth as the um, Saunders Waterford, and I know it's not as smooth as the Fabriano hot press. Just to give you kind of a comparison of how smooth it is, I'm going to bring the, it up to the camera and see if we can get a little bit of that texture in there. Just a hair. It's really quite smooth. And this is 100% cotton paper. I'm really liking this setup. And then the large porcelain palette, you will totally see me fill that up in upcoming videos. We're going to be doing a whole favorites layout with that. And for today, I had recently got these in a haul, and I haven't touched them since I did the haul video. Um, these are completely new to me, so this is a total experiment today. I have no idea how these are going to work, and I think we'll also test watercolor out on this paper. We'll test these out on this paper and have a little bit of fun, see if I can get maybe a little sketch down and do a little painting and a little swatching of these. So far the ink is going down really, really well. Um, not a problem at all. I just needed a slightly thicker pen. We need to get a little, little deepness in through some of these spots. And this is kind of a made up, I don't know if he's a dragonfly, he's kind of half butterfly. I was using an ultra fine pen and now I'm using a foodie nib on a Twisby, both of them were Twisbys, a mini. I think they're the diamond model. I think I'll make a couple. 
pull these just a little bit stronger. All right, not perfect, but he's got a little spunk. I'm gonna go ahead and get this taped up. We'll do some swatches over here. We'll play with him. We've got lots of things to do. All right, we got a little square taped off. What I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna put an entire wash of watercolor for the background and do it kind of just messy and loose. And then I'm gonna see how well this paper actually comes out. And then what we'll do is we'll use, we'll test out the egg tempera, see the colors, and then I'll do the details with those. And we'll see how it works uh, together. And a uh, little bit of an experiment today. This is a little bit of Kynite by Daniel Smith. I'll make a nice little puddle of it. Um, some of you who have been watching my last couple of videos know that I had the new naturals in here and I added a couple of colors. So we're going to add that and we're going to add a little bit of that lavender violet in a puddle here. See how these re-wet some more. You can see those in action. And then we'll use a little graphite too. This color is so pigmented. All right, let's try out that and we can add in a few more colors. Let me get a big brush so we can get this paper wet. I'm gonna wet the paper with my Silver number 40 quill brush. Let's see how that works on here. We're just gonna wet up the whole thing. And then we can start playing with the egg temper while this is drying. See how the paper lifts. The paper is really nice. It's actually a fantastic texture. I think you get the best of both worlds that you can actually draw on it and it'll be good for watercolor because it's got just a hint of texture for being a hot press paper. Sometimes they're so smooth and I didn't have any problem with the drawing on the paper with ink or pencil or anything. But sometimes if the cold press is too rough, sometimes you can have a problem with that. All right, let's have a little fun with these. We're gonna go right over him. And we're gonna keep doing layers until we get everything dark enough. Let's use a little bit of that Dyer's green as well. While that's drying, let's go ahead and lift out just a little bit to make it a little off the paper just fine. I kind of wanted the wings to look a little transparent so seeing a little of the background is kind of nice.
It's so fun to experiment like this. You get such a kick out of it. Well, that actually lifted really nicely. Hopefully, let me bring this up so you can see without the glare, maybe. It came out of the wings really, really easily. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's do a second coat. The paper did slightly buckle during that first coat, but smoothed out. All right, since we're gonna do our little bug guy in the egg tempera, I went ahead and got all of these out of the package. The first five are from that, um, are from this, and then I have three extras. So we're gonna swatch them out here, and then we'll do some mixes and start painting this little guy up. I'm going to be using more of synthetic type brushes. Most of the brushes that I'll use are, normally I'd use these for acrylic. Um, this is Onyx by Jackson's. And first up, we're not going to do white because we won't see it. So we will do the lemon. And this has, oh, I was expecting more of a feel like a, like a casein. But this actually has a different kind of like slip to it. So that's our lemon. This is our alizarin crimson. Let me see if I can line those up a little better so you can see what we got. Yeah, they have a slip to them. My brush is not really wet, it's slightly damp. They have a transparency to them too. I expected them to be more opaque, I think. And this is our ultramarine. Brilliant ultramarine. Now we have our ivory black. They are smooth, they are kind of creamy. Trying to leave a little room to show you some color mixes when I mix them up together for the little bug dude. I don't know what he really is, but he's kind of in the ugly stage right now. This is the cobalt violet. You can see the transparency through it, but you can also see the brush strokes. Now this does dry permanent um, and very matte. So you have to make sure you wash your brushes really well. Otherwise your brushes are gonna be hard as a brick. This is our permanent green. I know my 
swatches are a little wonky here. They feel completely different. I've never touched these before. I didn't pre-swatch them or anything, so this is this is new to me. They do kind of have a slip to them, which is a little different. I was expecting them to have a really dry feel. I don't know why, but I was. And this is their burnt umber. Right, you can see some in especially in the violet you can see the brush strokes and in the green some of them are a little more transparent than others they're drying extremely matte so let me figure out what I'm doing on him and we'll get started
All right, I think our little bug guy is just about done. I made him a little colorful. I think he turned out kind of cute, uh, especially for my first time. These dry really fast, super fast. So um, I hope you enjoyed. Let's take off the tape and see what we got. Tape pulls always fun. The tape is pulling off great off of this paper. No issues at all. I had a good experience on it. Yep, really, really nice to work with. These I'm gonna have to experiment with a lot more. I am really slow. <laughs> Let's have a closer look. Turned out kind of cute. I'll put a close up um, in the video so that you can see it, kind of the scanned in image. Um, overall, the Meden products, this setup is so nice. I can lift it, I can angle it, I perfect setup. Don't forget there's a discount code in the description as well as some links for the items. Um, this palette, the big one, we will be doing a whole separate video on that because we'll do a whole fill and a painting and all sorts of good stuff. I do really appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, this was a long one. I got so excited. I just needed to like use everything right away. And I hope you had fun seeing the egg tempera and seeing some of the naturals painted out. All the background was done with the naturals except for um, uh, one Daniel Smith, which was... Oh gosh, um, cane night. And then the whole bug was done with the Sennelier tempera. So thank you again for joining me. Please hit a button below if you can. Say hi um, and give me your opinions in the description on what you think of egg tempera kind of adding it to your watercolor. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.